Hey everyone, it's it's Jack, and today we're going to take a look at Maybox Linux. Yes, Maybox. This is a really cool Manjaro open box distro that I took a look at about a year ago, but I never did a review on it, believe it or not. And this is an amazing distro. This was brought to my attention by Travis Bear, and Travis said, I really like the concept of Solus. I've tried to use it but I miss the flexibility offered by Arch Distro. I'm currently using Maybox. And he had mentioned that actually a couple of times when he commented. And so Travis got me thinking, you know what? I want to take another look at Maybox. And I don't have any clue why I never reviewed it in the past. Apparently it must have got lost in the shuffle somewhere. I don't know, but wow, I got to check this out. So I'm out here at the Maybox website here. And here is got a beautiful website and this is mayboxlinux.org and they say right here on the website right off the bat fast lightweight and functional linux desktop rolling release manjaro based with openbox window manager and openbox just happens to be one of my favorite window managers probably because it's easy to use once it's set up now if you did an openbox install all by itself like a bare bones install you wouldn't see anything on your desktop i mean literally it would just be blank <laughs> and you'd have to right click to even know that you were in something. So the people here at Maybox kind of did all the hard work for you. They created all these great scripts and set up open box environment and added in a lot of nice goodies here. For example, they're saying that Maybox uses open box window manager along with lightweight apps, which makes it minimal and fast. It only takes 300 megs of memory, give or take. Wow. Now, I like that. Also, you get quick access to the latest packages available because it is arch based and you do have access to the AUR as well. And on top of that, Maybox is built on top of Manjaro Stable Branch. So it's powered by the LTS kernel 5.15 to be exact. And it is 100% complete and stable open box window manager. So this is looking great. And it also comes with a bunch of Maybox tools as they describe it carefully handcrafted utilities and scripts to provide streamlined desktop experience. Wow. And of course it's developed with passion. Maybox is free and always will be. And don't forget to support the team. So let's take a quicker look at this. If I scroll up here, we have a download button right here and I can just hit that download button and that'll take me over to the SourceForge website. And then here our green button shows that we can download the latest version. So I'm just going to click that. You can also click inside the 22.06 folder, but it's easier just to click this button. So I'm going to click it, download it, jump in, and we'll see what it's like. Okay, so now I'm in the Maybox boot screen. So I'm just going to hit boot with the open source drivers, and then we should be booted in here within the next six to eight weeks or sooner. All right, and we're in our live screen here, and it is looking good. I'm just right clicking here, and I'm going to just real quick jump in here and do a change to our monitor settings here. I'm going to come up here, hit that to 1920 by 1080, wherever it is. There it is. Hit apply. And that looks way better. Cool. So wow, this looks nice already, this background. I'm just going to save that. Actually, I don't need to save it because I'm in live mode. But anyway, that's all right. So here it looks like we got our bar up here on top and it's transparent in the middle. And then we got a right and left side here. So this is looking really nice. And then you right click and we got a menu here. Beautiful. I'm just going to jump right in here and Go ahead, get down to it, hit the install, and we'll do a quick install, and then we'll move onward and upward. So here it's showing the Maybox Linux installer 22.06 at the time of this video, and called Istred. I guess is how you pronounce that, <laughs> or Istred. Uh, interesting. So I'm going to hit next, and the defaults are all good, so I'm going to stick with that, and then next again. And then I'm just going to erase this, because there's nothing on here I need to save. And then I'll... Type in my usual funny name along with a password and then we'll choose use the same password for administrator account and then I'm going to hit next and install and install now because I'm sure I want to make the changes and there we go. So easy peasy nothing to this install and so I'm going to let it do its thing as soon as it's finished I'll be right back. So I'm just going to pause it for a second here. Okay it's all complete that didn't take long at all less than five minutes I think. So I'm going to hit the restart now and I'll be right back. When we're logged in okay and so far so good we got our maybox linux screen here and there's our login 
So awesome. Glad to see that working. I'm gonna log in. Not that I should be surprised. It was a super simple installer, Calamaries. And so here we have our Maybox welcome screen. Beautiful. And again, I'm just gonna jump in here. I did a right click and I'm gonna go to settings and monitor settings and just change that to 1920 by 1080 hit apply and that's okay and then i'm going to hit save to save the configuration there we go that way it'll always remember it every time i boot in and now we have our welcome screen here and this welcome screen looks really nice and here it's got a nice start area here and it starts right off with update the system so i think i'll do that that's something i always recommend to do right off the bat is to update the system and then we'll get to explore. So here it opened up PAMAC, it looks like, Software Center. And I'm just going to hit apply and just let it update all this stuff. And then I'll just let it do its thing. I don't think this is going to take all that long. And there's a little summary there for some dependencies, I think, or libraries. So there we go. And so I'm going to just let this do it. And I'm going to pause here. It should only take a minute. And I'll be right. Okay, that was pretty quick and painless. So that barely took two minutes there. And so now it's calling for a restart. I'm going to hit restart and let it restart. And then the restart ought to be pretty fast because we got this lightweight open box window manager here. And theoretically, it should have saved by setting for the resolution too. So hopefully that won't have to be reset again. <laughs> and there's our login screen. So I'm going to log right in. And so far, so good. Yes. And we got our 1920 by 1080 saved. And so that's out of the way. Got our system updated. It also has an option here to add a kernel by... Default, we have the LTS kernel on here, which is what I like personally. But if you want to add another kernel in there that you can switch back and forth between, Maybox gives you a really easy way to do that. This is a Manjaro thing. And one thing I really like about Manjaro is how easy they make it to change your kernel and update and revert and so forth. So here you can go ahead and add in something like a 5.19, which is actually the latest cutting edge, but not yet considered stable probably and then we got the 5.18 which is the latest stable as far as i know or the real time and then of course what we're running now so that's shown here in green which is the 5.15.50-1 kernel and so i'm just going to keep it that way i kind of like the 515 kernel that i don't really have a reason to run a newer one if i had some machine that i just bought that was just manufactured probably last week uh yeah Maybe the, the latest and greatest kernel would make a difference, but having the LTS stable kernel on here makes it just that, more stable. And you'll have less updates that are unnecessary to worry about to keep up with the new kernel. So yeah, there's a lot of advantages to that. And so here's the Manjaro settings manager, and this is kind of where you're really at. And we were inside the kernel setting here, but we also have our user accounts and all this other stuff here. So that's the Manjaro settings manager, which is really nice. And then we have this option to install popular apps. I like that too. If I hit that, it'll open up a window here and this is cool. So here we can look at all our categories. The categories are also listed here in this drop down box. So if you want to just specifically get into a category, you can use the grip drop down there and just jump in that way. So that's cool. Or the star to see them all listed again. Then we have an advance button here. And when you hit the advance button, it adds in some newer other things in here like system tools and virtual computing. So that's nice. So you get access to some extra things. Like for example, if you want to be able to install VirtualBox, GNOME Boxes, or Vert Manager, you got your choices here. And then system tools, you got things like Popsicle, which will let you create a bunch of bootable disks all at once on a USB stick on multiple USB sticks. That's kind of cool. Gnome Disk, Gparted, which is already installed, as you can see by the check mark there. And then some nice USB tools here like uh, Ministick, which is nice. That's a GUI. So you can write ISO files to a USB stick. And so that's pretty cool. And also ISO USB. I like that that's in there too. That's a graphical tool to let you copy hybrid ISOs onto a USB stick. Hybrid ISO might be something like uh, a Mac OS disk. I think those are hybrid type ISO files. So that's nice to see there. I like the advanced option. So by default, those aren't there. So uh, to get to those, that's what you would want to do is hit the advanced there. So let's see what they got. We got 
some extra browsers here and it's showing that we do have Firefox installed by default, but if you want to add in Vivaldi or Chromium or one of these other choices here, you can easily do that. So this is nice. I really like that they make these extra things easily available that you can just kind of get started with and just pop something on right off the bat. And here we got our office suites like free office, LibreOffice and MS Office Online if you're a Microsoft fan and then only office. Only Office is something I like a lot, and I'm going to check that. Only Office is really very close to a Microsoft Office, and it saves your files in a Microsoft format by default, which I really like too. And of course, that has the whole suite in there for spreadsheets and writing and PowerPoint type stuff and the whole work. So nice. And then here's our extended language support. So if you want to add in some extra things like Asian support, that's always a good thing. And personally, I kind of like the iBus version myself. However, FCT, FCITX is also excellent. So really just a better taste probably. <laughs> but I find that the iBus works better for pinion and stuff like that uh, in my experience. Then we got some extra test text editors. By default, I think Maybox is using Genie for the text editor. And if you want something a little more lightweight to add to it, we could use something like Gedit. And then here's where you can add in your printing capabilities here. Manjaro's got a complete meta package that you can add in. PDF. So here I would probably like using events. Ocular is also excellent. That's a KDE application. So you might get a few more dependencies uh, with that one. But if you don't mind that, Ocular is really a fantastic PDF viewer. Then we have PDF mod, which will allow you to modify PDF files in that you can remove, extract, and rotate pages in PDF documents. So that's kind of cool. And then beyond that, we have our graphics category here. And we have stuff like Blender, GIMP, Inkscape. I'll just add in Inkscape there. On a daily driver, I would personally be adding in Blender, GIMP, Inkscape, and probably Krita too. And then our photo stuff here, by default, View Noir is the default picture viewer, which is nice, but if you want to add something else in, or maybe you don't like View Noir and you want to get rid of it, you can uncheck it and then add in something like uh, Ristretto or Gthumb or something. So that's where you can make your pick there. And then we got Video Movie, and we have Kodi, Parol SM Player, Totem, VLC, and X Player. I'm going to add in VLC here. I like that one. And then I'll just close that up a bit and then go to Audio. And by default, we have Audacious installed here. And so I think that's looking good for me. And then for media recording and editing, we got Audacity. Typically, I would install that. And Caden Live, OBS Studio, Shotcut, excellent. And then we got OpenShot for TV, Simple Screen Recorder, and Flowblade. So personally, I would be installing a video editor along with Audacity for sure, plus OBS Studio, of course, being that I make videos. And then we have chat software and then backup software and time shift is a pretty decent choice there. And then we have under password managers. Uh, my personal favorite is KeyPass XC. And so I would probably be checking that guy too. And then I would hit update system and then it's going to ask to authenticate. And after that, it's probably going to ask if you want to install some optional files here, dependencies. And so I typically just click choose for these and then keep past dependencies. And then our Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese. So extra things you can add in there. And sure, why not? Then GED plugins. And then these are deep VLC dependencies. And again, uh, I can't see why I would not want to choose dependencies. <laughs> and then here we have these guys and a, oh, I forgot to choose. <laughs> Anyways, you're supposed to check these first uh, if you want to add in these extra dependencies. So I didn't do that, uh, but that's okay because this is just fun anyways. And it'll still work without these extras, by the way. Uh, I don't really need the ButterFS though because this was installed with ext4. So I think that would be kind of redundant. And we'll go ahead and let that choose. So yeah, don't forget to check them off the ones you want. <laughs> and you might even be able to do a control A, I don't know, and check, I'm not sure. But anyways, here's a list of our stuff. So I'm just gonna hit okay and just let that do its thing. And while that's kind of running there, that shouldn't take long. Let's explore a little bit. So I see we got some conkeys going on here. I'm just gonna slide this out of the way and get an exit out of the welcome screen. And so it looks like we got three conkeys. We got one down here in the lower right corner is showing a logo and then two over here. So it's showing our hotkeys and another conkey for hotkeys, it looks like. 
for our menus and side panels. And over here are for different apps and windows and so forth. So that's nice that we got this nice hotkey reference. That kind of makes it easy. But with OpenBox, if you're a little bit allergic to hotkeys, that's fine because you got all this access over here. You got the main menu here, which if you click on this, you got your Maybox main menu for your applications and all your categories here and then favorites. So that's really nice. Uh, a key binding shortcut, screenshot utility, and then of course your power strip. So that's really nice. And then of course you got a menu on each side here. You got these little left side panel. And if you click on this one, this one has quick navigation to places. And then you got all these little tools here like screen locker and system information, installing popular apps, which is just where we were. And then our tint two panel settings, that's pretty handy. Conky settings. And so if you want to change your conkeys on your desktop, this is the place you can do that. And then it's got these, your own commands, color menu, Pi radio, that looks fun. LX task, B top and weather. And then over here, we got a right menu. And so when we go on here, and we'll take a look a little bit closer look at these menus in a little bit, but just kind of want to give you a quick overview now. So we got our Maybox Control Center, and when we open that, then we got this. And so this gives you easy access to all kinds of different settings, like your locale settings, language pack, your kernel, user accounts, time and date, mouse and keyboard settings, and hardware config. So like, for example, your user accounts, when you go in here, you got your user accounts, and here you can change your information your password and all that, and even your image. I don't have anything loaded on here, but you could add a picture in here and then it would give you an image that you could use. And then if we go back to all settings, then here we got our time and date settings. So if we open that, here's our time and date settings where you can set the time and date automatically. Your hardware clock can also be in a local time zone if you want to specify that. Uh, but technically, but personally, I would just keep everything the same. Uh, here's where you can change your time zone if you have to, but all is well for me. Now, suppose you wanted to modify your clock a little bit more. Uh, like for example, if you wanted to add seconds on here, that would actually be done not in this time and date area. And I think if you click on it or right click, it's not gonna give you the option either. It's just gonna put you back in here. So how would you do something like changing your formatting? Well. That would be done through your Tint 2 panel settings right here. So if you hit Tint 2 panel and then you go into Configure Panel and then here we have Configure GUI. So I'm going to hit that. This is like the easy way to do it. And then this is going to load in our different panel themes here. And then once we got that, there's our Properties window which opened up and this is where we want to be. Our themes are over here. So it downloaded the panel themes, but the property window opened right up here on top. And so we want to select panel items, I believe, or I mean clock. And so we go to clock here and then here it's showing our first line format. And you can see that the hour and minutes are showing up. And if you want seconds to be up there, all you got to do is click in this box then type colon and then percent S uppercase S and then apply that. And now you got seconds up there. So that's the key to doing that. If you need to tweak your clock a little bit more than what, where you were. <laughs> and then of course your backgrounds and gradients, you can really get down on uh, a root level. Here's your panel position. So if you wanted your panel, like say on the bottom, for example, you can click right here and then hit apply. And now your panel's on the bottom and it looks kind of more like a traditional look. So oh, that's kind of nice. And as you can see, it's got thumbnail previews on the bottom and that's really cool. Uh, I forgot that you could do thumbnail previews in Tint. Uh, in fact, I'm not even 100% sure you could do that before, but I'll show you where you can turn that on and off because that's a nice feature too. And some people love it, but there might be some people that are annoyed by it. Or if you change your theme, it might disappear. And if you like it and you want it back, I'll show you how to get it. So what we want to do is down here, we want to go to, let's see, I think it would be task buttons. Here it is. And so down here under appearance, we got thumbnails. And so this box is checked. And if you uncheck it, then it'll stop showing your thumbnails. So if I go down here, now the thumbnails are not there. But if you check it again, hit apply and our thumbnails are back. And you can also adjust your size. So if you think that's too small, you want to make it bigger. You can just come up here to thumbnail size and just put in another number like 300, hit apply. And now your thumbnail's even bigger. Nice. So that's thumbnail. And I'm just barely scratching the surface with all the things that you can do here with your tint two and all that. So again, hit okay. 
And these are our different panel themes. So right now our default theme is, I'm not sure which, <laughs> uh, probably this since it's highlighted. But when it comes to changing themes, actually there's a different way I prefer to do that. But you can't actually do it here if you want to change just the theme on your panel. There's another area if you want to change your theme for everything, the entire system. And we'll jump into that in just a second. But this is where you want to change it if you just want to specifically change your panel. Maybe you want to have an overall theme like a Dracula theme, but maybe you like the, maybe you like this better, the gradient. So you can mix a gradient with the Dracula theme by going in here and just specifically selecting this for your panel. And then it'll change just your panel, but it'll leave your overall theme alone. And then, of course, if we go up here, we can select this guy and it'll add a dock down here at the bottom. And so you'd probably want this on top or vice versa. So we just come back out of here and we have our conky setting. So here you can choose your conkeys. So right now we're showing our logo, which is down here in the lower right corner. If I wanted to take that out, all I'd have to do is uncheck that, hit apply, and then the logo will disappear. Okay. So now we got our other two conkeys, but what if we wanted something else on here, like our sysinfo graph or just our sysinfo without the graph? Or you can have a clock, tiling terminal, a quoter if you want to see quotes. Uh, that's kind of cool. Why don't we turn on quoter and maybe the sysinfo. Now hit apply and there we go. So now we have our sysinfo up here and down here we have quotes. It'll just kind of show up here randomly. This one says we must overcome the notion that we must be regular. It robs you of the chance to be extraordinary and leads you to the mediocre. Uta Hagen. Wow. Yes, it's quite deep and quite true. Totally agree. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I like this. This is nice. So you can see your status and your RAM usage right now is like at 805 megs. And that's not too bad with all the stuff I got open, I'd say. So I'm going to close that. That's our Conky editor. And then our menu and panels. So here you can edit your different menus and tweak them. So if you like to tweak and tinker, this is really a, an ideal distro for sure. And we have our PyCom settings for your compositor, our Maybox theme manager. And this is what I was talking about just a little bit earlier. If you want to change your overall theme, you can actually go in here into the Maybox theme manager. And there's actually a few ways you can get in here. You can actually get in here through the menu too, but just by hitting your hotkey, your, your windows, your super S, and then that'll get you in here and then you can just jump into look and feel, I think it is. And that would kind of take you to the same place. Well, actually not the same place, but this, this would kind of change your other stuff here. Like if you want your widget settings, this is where you would go customize look and feel if you want to change different aspects of your theme, but maybe not the whole theme. So if you just want to change like your widgets here, maybe you want a, a dark look or whatever. Uh, that would be all right here. And then of course you got your different color settings. That one's pretty wild. <laughs> and then your icon themes, you can change all that here. So that's all good to know. And for example, like if I was using open box and I want my icons to work with OBS studio, I need an icon theme that's compatible with o OBS studio. So what I would do is I would use something like, oh, maybe Adwaita, for example, and maybe I would choose that icon theme. And then what I would do is press control S and bring up this menu. And there's something here called reload GTK. And when I hit that, that'll reload the theme. So it applies down here in the taskbar. And then my OBS studio will work properly. I'll be able to see the pause and record overlays. Whereas on some other theme like uh, ePapyrus, I wouldn't be able to see those. And so that's kind of how you get around that. So this is all handy to know. So hopefully that's not too much information overload. Now, what if I want to change themes overall? Well, here we got our overall theme. And by default, we're using the is tread. I guess that's how that's pronounced. And that's the theme we're on now. But suppose we wanted to change something different like Nordic, Cyberpunk, Bunsen. You know, here's where we can do that. Dracula. That's a cool one. So let's start out with Chicago 95. This will make your windows look like a Windows 95 desktop. How cool is that? I'm going to click that and hit restore here and let's see what happens. Then hit OK. Wow. Now we're in the world of Windows 95. So if I open up like our file manager, cool. We got this cool Windows 95 retro look. How cool is that? I like that. That's really neat. That kind of brings me right back to the bad old days. <laughs> yeah, but it looks great though. I just really like this. This is a really cool look. And just like that instantaneous change even has the 
that t that tealish kind of background there that they used in Windows 95. <laughs> That's cool. And it looks like our software installer finished too. So I'm just going to close that and just kind of close that box there to get her out of the way. And it shows that our system was updated here. So I'm going to close that too. So yeah. Wow. <laughs> How cool is that? Let's try a couple others and see what we got here. So what's the Bunsen look like? This is kind of a cool one too. So I'll hit his restore again and OK. And then right away we should get a change. And there we go. Nice. A whole new look just like that. Instantaneous. And you can see our panels on top again. Nice. And these are our open apps. And as you can see, our thumbnail previews are now back to the default size, which I think was around 240 or so, give or take. So really awesome. And I clicked in the desktop. If I click the desktop again, they'll come back. So that's kind of like a, an instant show desktop, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, so that's cool. So just click off to the side, then click again. Everything comes back. And that's a pretty handy thing, especially over here uh, when you have margins here on the side of your panel. So if you got something full screen and your panel is available, you can just go off to the edge on your panel and then click back and forth to get that show desktop effect. So another nice thing. And I like these folders too. That's a nice theme there. So looking good. And then here, so that's the Bunsen look. Not bad. And then we got Cyberpunk Neon. That looks pretty wild. So if I hit restore and OK, we are in Cyberpunk Neon. Wow, bad to the bone. And I think I got to close the file manager, open it back up again to get its actual look. I'm going to jump back in there and there we go. Man, that is gorgeous. Check that out. That is cool. Beautiful. Yeah, so this is really taking open box to the next level. I got to tell you, I'm loving this. I could probably sit here all day and do this. <laughs> Uh, let's try Dracula. We'll hit restore. And so you can totally change your whole look just like that with a click. And I really like that. So if you get bored with one look, you can get in here and you're just a click away from a whole new look. And so here's the Dracula. And again, I'm not sure that's quite right. So I'm going to close that and open the file manager again. And yeah, I guess it was. Okay. So that's cool. And so that's Dracula. And it's actually got the square kind of look up there. That's kind of different and cool too. And then here we got our look and feel. So if there's anything, let's say you like Dracula and you're like, wow, I want to keep it just the way it is, except I don't like something. So you can go in here to customize look and feel. And then maybe you can change uh, like, for example, maybe you don't like the buttons up there. You could go here to window border and then choose a different theme. Like for example, Dracula without border. And it looks like that gives you round buttons. So if you like the round ones better, you can hit apply and now they're round. Or maybe you don't like it blending in so much with the background. Maybe it's hard to see the, the window border. So maybe you want something different. You can come up here and choose from all these different different choices here. And actually the cyberpunk neon looks like it could maybe even work with Dracula. Let's take a look. Yeah, so that kind of worked. Um, and it's kind of a minimal size there, but lots to choose from. Super Desk, Matcha, Azul. So yeah, many, many things. MB Colors, Micro 95, that goes with the Chicago, I think, the Windows 95 look. MB Colors looks kind of nice. You know, hit that. And then if you want something that maybe stands out even more, there's the Yeti line. And then this one here, the Adapta, kind of gives you a little bit of a neon outline, it looks like. So if I hit apply here, then that gives us something that's a little more defined. So that makes it a lot easier to make out your windows when you got things piled on top of each other. So that might also be a good choice. And that probably is easier to see in the video too. So I think I'll keep that. So here's where you can fine tune things. So Maybe you want a different icon theme. Papyrus Dark is the default with this, but maybe you want something a little different. So you can go up here and look at these green, black colors and the Windows 95, which is kind of cool. There's Beauty Line, Edweta. So yeah. And then if we back out of here, we got wallpaper. So here you can adjust your wallpaper and it opens up nitrogen and gives you a nice selection here that you can go from, choose from here too. So we can just kind of see an overall view. And so we can select a ton of different wallpapers here and lots of choices. That one looks kind of cool. And if I hit apply and then click off, then there it is. Cool. I'm liking it. We got this. Hit apply. Yeah, that's pretty wild. It looks like the conkey's back. That's because we changed our theme. When you change your theme, 
then it kind of gives you all the defaults, it looks like, for that theme. So if you want to ditch the conky, I guess I would just do Control S, Super S, Conkeys, Choose Conky. And then I'm just going to turn off the logo there, hit Apply. There we go. Now we can see a better out of the wallpaper. So I'll close that and jump back into our wallpaper. And that's a pretty cool background. That would definitely be one of my choices there. And that planet, I think I was already on that, but that looks really cool. <laughs> and there's a cool background. Another cool one. Looks like a branded background there. We got this guy. Nice. And goes good with the conkeys too. So that's something you want to kind of consider. And there's the cat eyes. Wow. Pretty wild. That looks cool. I like that. I noticed on this theme though, the conkeys are a little bit darker than I like. So I might want to tweak that. So if I hit my super S key again, come down here and go to conkeys and go to colorizer here on the bottom, then we can take this guy and we can kind of colorize these. So you can see here the default color is this kind of dark purple here. And so if I want to lighten that up, I can come over here and just hit something lighter like this guy. And now our numbers over here are a lot lighter, a lot easier to see. And then if you want to do the same thing with a purple, we could also do that by just selecting this one right here, color zero, and then just lightening up that shade a bit. So maybe we could just go like here, take a look at that. And there we go. Actually, that looks almost the same color. So maybe I would make that just a little bit more purplish, maybe a slightly lighter purple. And then that makes it a little easier to see there. And then we got that. So that's where you can kind of change your colors and you can kind of tweak that to your heart's content. And another thing I like on this left hand side panel is over here they got these quick access things like Pi Radio, your color menu and B Top, weather. And then they got these two things I really like. You got your random color scheme and random wallpaper. I like these randomizers. Like if you hit this color scheme, it'll change the color scheme in your menus. So if you hit that, then it gave it a whole new look there on your menu. And maybe you don't like that, so you can click it again, and it'll give you another look. Kind of like it was before, but it, click it again, and again, and there's another look. And you can just keep clicking it until it makes you go, wow, I'll take it. And there's green. So that's another thing you can do. You can never be bored. You can always go in here and randomize things. And actually, this looks great with the Dracula theme. So I gotta kind of go with that one, I think, for now. And then you can also do the same with your wallpaper. Hit random wallpaper. So maybe you're bored with a kitty cat there. So you can hit it again and it'll bring up something else. And if that's too pink, you can go again. And now it's green. And now we got a, a simpler Maybox branded wallpaper. And then there's a beach. So you can kill a bunch of time just flipping through wallpaper. Nice. And the green one's kind of cool. So something to give you a hobby in case you were a little too bored. And I like that too, the theme, the cityscape there. That's kind of cool. So lots of great choices there. So that's your randomizer. Wow. And then of course, let's take a look real quick at our software. So here again, we got our quick access to our terminal. And so I can open that up and there we have our terminal. And I just press my control key and I'm rolling my mouse wheel to make it bigger. I can actually grow that too. So if I was going to just do an update, which we don't need, but I could just type in pseudo pacman hyphen uppercase S Y U and then log in. And it, you'll notice here that it turned red because anytime you go into root or super user privileges, then you get a red screen here letting you know that that you are elevated in your privileges. So that's nice to see. I like the fact that it does that. That's, that's a really nice touch. And as you can see, it's all up to date. So that's good. Now, one thing I ran into with OpenBox in the past with my Dell computer is that it didn't give me the ability to adjust brightness. So my brightness was always cranked up to 100%. And I was always like, ah, and if I went over and tried to adjust the brightness using the power settings, it didn't work. And by the way, the, the power settings, again, Super S will take you right to this shortcut here. And if you go into Power Manager, it's got some basic dis display settings here. And then I think there was another place too where you can get a, a display slider, but it, it did absolutely nothing on my Dell. So I had no ability to adjust the brightness back to where I like it because I like it somewhere around 55% or 50 something uh, just to kind of back it off a bit for my computer. So the way I solved that was I downloaded a utility called brightness control. And so I think you can get it through the Pac-Man re repos. So just a pseudo Pac-Man hyphen uppercase S then brightness CTL and then just hit yes or why. 
or just press enter. <laughs> and then we got it installed. So then all I have to do, once you got that installed, what I did on my machine was I set it at 52%, which to do that, you would type in brightness CTL and then hyphen S, and then you would type in 450. Brightness control goes from like zero, forgot the L. Brightness control goes from zero to, I think, 937, if I remember right, for the range. And so 450 is right around halfway. So if I do 450 and then minus, that means I want to lower the brightness by that much, which is about 52%. And so if I hit that and then press enter, then it will lower it by 52%. Of course, I'm in a virtual right now, so it doesn't do anything in a virtual, but on a real machine, it would be telling me now that the current brightness is at 52%. And so that's how you adjust your brightness control. And if you want it a little bit brighter, like uh, 60% or something, then you would just do the same command except have it a little higher, like maybe 500. And so that's how you do that. That might come in handy for somebody out there. And this will be saved in your config once you run that. If you need to go back to 100%, uh, I believe it's 937. It'll tell you just by typing in brightness control. Uh, and then, but 937 I think is the 100% there. Actually, if you do something above it, it's still going to do 100%, like if you did a thousand. <laughs> but the nice thing is it'll remember that setting. So when you restart again, it'll already be there. So that's a nice little tweak to have in mind just in case you have issues with brightness and you're just full blast on and getting blinded. Another thing I like to do with open box is I like to have the num lock enabled. So the way I do that is I just press super key to bring up our normal menu here. <laughs> and here we got Maybox config. So if I select that and then come over here and go to auto start. And if I go to auto start, then we have a GUI editor and you can also edit the file manually. The GUI editor is nice if you want to add in visually an application that's already there. Like for example, if you wanted to add in an extra something here, like a blue man app applet, hot corners, or any of these other things, or even an alternative volume icon, you can check that box and it'll, next time you start, it'll show up in your menu there. However, I like, uh, I want to go into Maybox config, auto start, edit auto start file, advanced for advanced users. And so this is our auto start config file here. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, all I got to do is type in a command numlock x. And then that'll activate my numlock every time I start the computer. So that's kind of nice and I like that. So I would go in here and I would just type in two hashtags here as a comment. That way I can just create a note telling what that is. So I would just say something like uh, turn on numlock. And then I would put in my actual command and my command would be numlock x, just like that. And then I can just save that and close it. And then the next time I restart the computer, the numlock will stay on or it'll be on if it wasn't on already. So that's how you get your numlock key activated. And so there, that's just a little quick tutorial on how to get your numlock, but not just numlock. I mean, anything you want to start up, if you want to put it in manually, that is how you do it. So yeah, little tidbits of information. And then real quick, we got our different apps by default, like our Genie and then our graphics stuff here. And of course I added in some things like Inkscape and so forth, but here we got our Flameshot screenshot tool, but we also got a shortcut to screenshot right here, which is nice. And then you can see the stuff that we installed as well, like Audacity and VLC are on, and then our internet stuff, Firefox by default, our office programs like only office and our document viewer for PDF files. Here's our light DM greeter settings. And so if you wanted to change your greeter, you could do that here. And this would allow you to tweak it. Like if you wanted a different theme, you could have something other than the arc dark in there. You can change your image and so forth. And this is your login screen. So this is kind of what you see on your login screen. And then the what you can have on your panel. So all this stuff, your window position, everything right here is all tweakable. So again, if this is a tinkerer's dream <laughs> and key bindings, of course, essential if you wanna modify and add in all kinds of custom key bindings, that's the spot where you'd wanna go. And again, over on our right side, just kinda more choices here. There's direct link to your software management, Pam Mac, system update, and all the good stuff there. Your Maybox user guide. And again, a screenshot tool, configure custom commands. 
And then here's your power strip for logging out, restart, shut down, and all that good stuff. Excellent. And then here up on here, our panel items, we got our CPU settings, our status and our memory status, and then network in case you need to adjust something on your network. Handy. And whoa, where did I go? Oh, I'm down in the lower right corner now. That's where I should have been a long time ago. I forgot to shrink myself. Wow. Well, hopefully I didn't screw up my video. If I did, I'll have to start over again. You'll never see all that stuff that I just said, except you'll see it again when I'm small. Anyway, onward and upwards. And I'm almost done now too. Okay. So anyways, yes, our three different menus. And of course you can right click anywhere on the screen and always get quick access to stuff. Your software, your file manager, terminal, browser, your configuration and all your software here, so really nice. And then of course, if you want to log out or shut down, you can hit the power strip over here and you get a nice menu here to, to jump out and you can even configure your options, so fantastic. And then your volume control, you can click on it and it'll mute, click on it again to unmute it, or you can roll your mouse wheel while you're over it and then you can change your volume settings that way. Make your volume louder or quieter. Or you can right click on this and then you can get right into your, your control settings here, like the POV control, however you pronounce that. And then here you can adjust your settings however you need to. You can also right click and get easy access to Pi Radio Visualizer. You can edit your stations list in Pi Radio. So this Pi Radio is a really cool looking app. And if you hit that, then It'll open that up and it'll give you this cool little internet player and you can jump down here and select a station and play something and it'll work just great. Nice. And then of course, network settings and then easy access to a screenshot tool. So you can just hit that and take a quick screenshot and you can go full screen, active window, window with no decorations or select an area. So I could just hit select area and then just get a screenshot of something like this guy and it'll open right up in View Noir, your picture, picture editor, and it automatically saved it to your picture folder. So if I open up my file manager and go into pictures, we have a screenshots directory, and here's our picture. So I can just open that, and there it is. So that's where it stores the picture. It does that automatically, and so I like that. I think that's really cool. And since we're in our file manager, Another thing I'd like to do is just take this and kind of add these over here into our side pane. And the way you do that, by the way, we're running uh, PC Man FM here. And so to add these shortcuts, like for example, maybe I want a shortcut to my desktop folder. Just right click, select add to bookmarks, and now it'll show up over here. And I can do the same thing with documents and any other folder that I want to add, maybe pictures in there and maybe my video folder. And so now they all show up over here. So you got shortcuts to all these guys here. And so that's how you can kind of tweak that. Oh man, wow, I think I just covered everything. Jeez, I got to tell you, this is the coolest open box distro I think I've ever come across. I really like this. I could put this on my computer, run it as a daily, and I think I would be just thrilled with it. It's super light on resources. Right now I got quick access to Conky, so right at a glance I can see that my RAM usage right now is at 705 megs, and I ran this idle right from a fresh boot, and I remember it was right around 300 and... 60 megs, I think, give or take. So yes, very, very light on resources. And yet you just got this awesome look. And it's something I don't think I could ever get tired of because you got the randomized wallpaper, the randomized colors on the menus. You got a gazillion different themes that you can just instantly switch from. I could be into a wild neon look or a classic Windows 95 retro look in just a click of a button. And it's so configurable, it's unbelievable. I mean, you could tinker with this thing for hours and just have endless possibilities. And Maybox just kind of brought it all together and made it really easy to do a gazillion different things without having to spend the next 27 years Googling everything. <laughs> so I'm loving it. This has really made OpenBox the perfect Windows manager to play with in my book. Wow. So with that, I am definitely giving this two thumbs up. Actually, four thumbs up. So here's three and four. I love it. And Travis, thank you for pointing this out. You had mentioned, like I said before, a few times about using Maybach and you really piqued my curiosity. Wow, you really like Maybach. I'm going to check it out and I'm glad I did. Oh my gosh. 
I think I'm going to be putting this on something. Could even try it as a daily for a month or so and just see what I think. And who knows, it could go permanent. So there you go. I hope this review was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to leave that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.